Hello and welcome to another episode of Color of Changes Tell Black Stories podcast. I'm today's host, Gia Peppers, and thank you to our sponsor, the Open Society Foundation, an organization that builds vibrant and inclusive societies whose governments are accountable and open to the participation of all people. Tell Black Stories is an initiative created as an extension of Color of Change's Hollywood work, an initiative to change the rules in Hollywood by ensuring accurate, diverse, empathetic, and human portrayals of Black people in film and in television. We collaborate with writers, producers, executives, and influencers to raise industry standards and change representation of Black people and issues affecting us throughout the media landscape. Today, Y'all, today is a big day because we're joined by some of the amazing directors from Black is King, a film by Beyonce, the powerful new, new film that's on Disney Plus. And the film reimagines the lessons from the 2019 blockbuster, The Lion King, The Gift. So for today's young kings and queens in search of their crowns, it is literally the must-see film, probably I'm gonna just go ahead and say it of the decade. Um, and so I'm a super, super excited to have everyone here. We, we're starting out with the guys and Jen will join us later. But again, it's a, celebrate, a celebratory memoir for the world on the Black experience. So again, welcome guys. Hello, hello, how are you? Hey. Hi. Great, thank you for having us. Thank, no. you Thank you all for your talent. Thank you for your eye. Thank you for your time. We are so happy to have you. And so I'm going to let everybody start and introduce themselves really quickly because I want to make sure that everyone here is able to see the beauty that is the, these here Black Kings on our screen. So uh, Kwesi, I'll start with you. So I'm Kwesi Fujur, creative director at Parkwood and also co-director of Black is King. Joshua, you want to go next? Sure, I'm Joshua Kissy, photographer and photographer and creative director as well. Um, second unit director on Black is King. Awesome. Blitz, tell us a little bit about yourself. I'm Blitz, uh, Baz Wule, um, director, um, visual artist, musician, kind of straddler, <laughs> consistent straddler. Uh, but yeah, director, director on, on Black is King. Beautiful, beautiful. Ibra, I'm going to go next. Uh, my name is Ibra Ake. I'm a producer, uh, photographer, uh, screenwriter, and a director on Black is King. And last but not least on this call, Emmanuel, tell us about yourself. I am Emmanuel J. I am a director and visual artist and uh, happy to join you guys. Thank you guys so much for being here. And so Kwesi, I wanna start the conversation with you because you've been a part of the Parkwood family for I believe a decade and you're the, the creative director of the Parkwood Entertainment Group um, and you were able to bring together most of this team. So tell me a little bit about, I know you all started this process in the backyard of Beyonce's home in the Hamptons and just kind of went for it and started filming and you didn't even know this was gonna be a movie. So when you got the, the when you all figured out that it was going to be a movie, which what was the first call you made and, and, who, and why did you make it to that person? Um, okay, wow, great question. Um, so we, when we realized it was going to be a film, it actually started with Blitz. Mm. We, are, we had shot majority of the videos. Um, I want to say, um, I want to say it was a good 75% of our content was already shot. And at this point in time, we wanted to try to figure out how to mesh the worlds and blend it in a way, um, that was truly malleable to the viewers and and you know we were we were having multiple conversations and we came across across the work of Mr. Blitz and you know we reached out and we just basically said hey <laughs> this is this is all of what we've shot and um and I want to say it was a u-haul of content <laughs> it was like this is all of what we shot and we want to try to figure out how to make this a story so then, you know, Blitz kind of came in and, you know, proposed a through line of a story that would help us mesh everything together. Beautiful. Okay, Blitz, uh, to, to you now, because this is a, a perfect time to start with you, 
you get this U-Haul of content. You're sitting at home and you're like, I don't know if you're really at home, but I see DC commercial, let's just go there. You're sitting at home and, and what exactly goes through your mind when you see it? And how did you, and did the story tell itself or did you already have a story in mind? What was your process, initial process? Yeah, uh, man, it, it, to be honest, I mean, Kwesi remembers this. It was overwhelming. I, I mean, I remember walking into the office and then I think everybody walked out and left me in there with like boards of just all this incredible footage, you know, uh, um, still photography um, of, of all this stuff. And um, the initial initial thing for me was, you know, how do we take these, this incredible story that we already known, um, Lion King, right? We all grew up on it one way or the other um, and kind of figure out for me, like the, the core thing has always been how Africa has been socialized, right? From a place of, na of wildlife and nature, right? And, and that, that, you know, Lion King was part of that spawning for yeah. a lot of people. And so I was just like, you know, this opportunity was, was incredible because it helped us, you know, ground a story this um, global uh, within the people, right? So that was kind of where I started. The first question is, where do we go? Like, where do we, because, you know, it, it's a Beyonce project. So it was going to sp span, um, you know, the diaspora in an incredible way. We already knew that. And so much of the content already reflected that. So it was, the question was, how do we create a narrative that would end up being the spine, uh, something solid and something that wouldn't also alienate? Because folks were still shooting at this point. I mean, it was like everything wasn't fully there too. So I had a little, you know, some opportunities to influence certain things as they were still coming in. And then certain things we kind of had to use as is. But um, the core was, all right, cool. I'll, I'll go down to South Africa. I will figure out a center there around which then all this other stuff can oscillate, you know? Mm -hmm. And we were, we, were, we were incredibly lucky um, to obviously find a cast that was fantastic, a cast that could kind of hold all this stuff together. And then, um, and then even, even after shooting that, you know, we had to come back to the United States and then figure out how to kind of um, integrate some of this other stuff within what had already been shot. So it was like, all right, cool. We have to shoot a little with Beyonce to make sure that it, it kind of, the narrative kind of goes through. But it also started with me with like, about like close to 200 frames of storyboard, which is where I always start. Mm -hmm. So, it, you know, it was like, how do I include some of the stuff that had been shot, but also, um, you know, add the stuff that I was going to add so that we could all kind of see it, you know, and, and I think, I think Kwesi will remember, I was in that room for like a good three, four days, just kind of banging away at these at these storyboards up until we were happy that it was, okay, this made sense mm. narratively. And then, you know, I think everything else kind of fell in line. That is beautiful. That is beautiful. And then I would love to know when each of you other directors here on the call were able to come in and when did you all come in the, in the on the project process? Um, Maybe Josh, I'll go with you next. When did you get in on the process? Um, it was an interesting one. And I've explained this previously, um, of course, being good friends with Chrissy. Um, I was in Ghana at the time already for like a, my grandmother's funeral. Um, Chrissy didn't know that at the time. So he just hit me and was just like, hey, like we're working on something really special. Um, would you like to play a part and bring the visuals to life as far as like on the ground narratives in Ghana? Um, and of course, like, you know, you're going through a whole funeral in Ghana, like as Blitz known Emmanuel and, you know, pretty much us Africans know it's a big deal to have a funeral. It spans days and days of celebration. Uh, yeah. But I thought this would be a beautiful moment to kind of reflect what Ghanaian culture looked like to me from, from that perspective. Um, so those themes of royalty, not just in the physical form of how people look at it, but in, in the form of the everyday narrative of like, elevating and amplifying the beauty of how we treat each other as people, the, the culture, the traditions um, that go into it and how to like insert that in a narrative that was provided from Kwesi and Beyonce. It's like, okay, how do I fill in these gaps, but as well as make this very much of the now um, that's happening in Ghana and across West Africa and be able to represent that truly. Um, so yeah, that was kind of the space that I had to play within. And it was, it was a pleasure to do so because it was like at the same time writing a, a love letter to my grandmother who I lost, but as well as 
to the general diaspora of like this is something that nourishes us and we could all kind of take a part in um so it was just kind of a pleasure to play that yeah, and it's so it's so cool that you started with Josh because just to give you kind of insight on the craziness, because when Blitz was coming in, we had started with already and we were wrapping up already and we were trying to figure out what already was going to be. Mm. And, you know, we could not do something that that says King already without incorporating the continent, without incorporating, you know, the core, you know. So, you know, I saw that Josh was in... Um, Africa and I called him and I was just like Josh can, can you work on this with me meanwhile we had just finished shooting um, other side and we were working on other side and don't jealous me which is where Emmanuel comes in um, and then I guess he could go next but there were so many going back to what Blitz was saying it was kind of like this juggling act of like many different things happening simultaneously. Meanwhile, Ibra is coming in to look at the multiple boards that we had, you know, on the wall of things that we had shot and potential ideas to then start his treatment and start his process because the idea for him was to shoot in Nigeria. So, you know, there was a lot of different things happening simultaneously. So essentially it was bringing in quite literally all of the countries in Africa that you wanted to hit that needed to be a part of this story. Exactly. Oh, I love that. Okay, Emmanuel, tell me a little bit about when yeah. you got the call because you told me a little bit obviously already and, <laughs> and don't jealous me, but tell me a little bit about what your process uh, was like with this film. Yes. So um, I uh, received... Um, a text or actually a mail uh, through my my agent and I knew it, it said Parkwood that's that was the only thing and it had like just a question what are your available dates yeah. so I knew that was going to be special because um, I had to cancel everything <laughs> that I had in line and uh, hop on this plane and um, what followed up was me uh, chatting with Quasi and Quasi basically asking me, um, oh, he pretty much drew the question, um, like, how can we redefine what uh, black means and symbolizes and, you know, uh, and offer our audience uh, the chance to use this word as a... Um, cultural pivot point for black people yeah. across the globe and you know that that was a big question because not only did i uh, had to come up with um, some ideas for for other side and initially was um i think we, we spoke about niles while well, i wrote something for now and ended up not doing now but um but it it, it I, I felt the responsibility to don't forget, don't forget about don't jealous me and don't je don't jealous me for sure yeah that video that part there you can't <laughs> right? forget about that yeah, that's, 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 yeah that, that's a funny part yeah but i was gonna say i, I felt i really felt the responsibility uh, um to to contribute to this uh i mean it already felt so sincere yeah uh and 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 it i instantly knew it could add some sort of value to the earth, or at least innovate. So I was lucky, and I was also lucky because I could collaborate with so many great creatives and kind of build up from the ground and, and, and um, you know, try to basically try to get that emotional uh, core yeah. that is in The Lion King, try to get that into this film. So, um, yeah, that, it, like from the moment I, I stood on set all the way up till, uh, till the release, we, I mean, I think we all kind of worked our asses off, uh, but I mostly worked on, um, at, also as a visual effects director, supervising all the visual effects together with, with Quasi. Wow. And um, yeah, kind of, finding that nice balance between between uh, the, the stuff that was already shot, but also the new shots that were pretend, like, that were kind of 
like new shots that we were creating in post production mm -hmm. and new storylines and um yeah that was that was such a great experience like having not only having the time because that's also rare like having the time to actually build a story but also creating a story together with uh, not only peers but actually people that you share your the same voice with mm, yeah. you know, everybody has had its own his his own his hers own sound and spe especially uh, Beyonce <laughs> uh but I, it truly felt like everybody put its own sound to the mix i love that and uh yeah that was a very special very special collective experience beautiful thank you thank you well i have to stop one second because yeah. miss jen in came in did i say your last name right is it nq yes in in the anglicized way is Inkiru, the, the, the traditional way is Inkiru, but both are correct. <laughs> get it right. Hi, welcome to the Hi. I was hey, going to hey. go to... Hey, to, everyone. Hey. <laughs> I was going to go to Ibra real quick, and then I'll come back to you. We're talking about how everyone got involved with the project and at the different times of their process. Mm. So, Ibra, please take it away. Uh, I got involved in this project. I feel like Kwesi dropped me a coded hint because we talk all the time. <laughs> I'm a huge fan. Um, Parkwood and Beyonce have consistently stolen our collective thunder on projects <laughs> several times. <laughs> I literally think uh, the title dropped the same day as the Gambino project, uh, <laughs> sending us the blue. <laughs> so it was uh, good to be on the winning team. <laughs> but um, but no, nah, yeah, he reached out to me uh, more in full at, at the end of last year and was kind of like, this is what's going on. And um, it was, it, yeah, it was just like a huge honor. Uh, he's just someone I've always, you know, there's not that too many people that work in the same space of like a multi hyphenate like I do. And so uh, there are just a lot of problems I'm only able to talk to him about, so to mm -hmm. speak. And um, and no, it was really great. And uh, it was very stressful. I was in the Atlanta writer's room. Um, and I've kind of more recently committed to my journey as like a director, like the last year or two, um, and um, as well as screenwriting and stuff like that, and producing music videos and things like that. So. Um, it was just kind of like a lot to balance <laughs> both of the things and um but it, it was i don't know it was just really exciting and i and i think um it was kind of nice to have this thing to to turn my brain off because because writing was just like so demanding and so um not turn my brain off but you know what i mean like i feel like <laughs> put on hold <laughs> like 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 and, and, yeah. so, and so i was it was really welcome and i and um they were i don't know it, it was just kind of cool to see how supportive they were and i think what really was really fascinating once i got to work I've never been so like overwhelmed by material. Just like again, like going into the room when Quasi was kind of giving me the rundown and seeing all the images on the board, and I, I literally remember the storyboard and the mood boards and the treatments like wrapped around the room. And I'm like, I don't know, understand how you and Blitz are doing the math on <laughs> all of this. I'm confused. <laughs> and um. And I don't know, it was just really impressive. And I, I think another thing also, which I've never had this experience before, like uh, so many of my references were up there on the board, which I was like, oh, this is like an image only I understand. And I'm not really used to going to a production meeting and seeing things I understand. I usually it just feels like a crazy memory I'm trying to explain to someone who doesn't get me. And um, But it was, a, it was a really dope experience. And like part of me was really just, needed to go back to Nigeria and um and um it was just like a it was just like a blessing to to be offered to be part of it and um and I think my favorite thing as a creative is just working with people I I love and respect because I I feel like I learned so much more and I'm I'm always considering myself a student so um 
um, I, it was just really exciting to get the call and be offered everything by Kwesi. And, um, and um, I've always wanted to shoot in Lagos because it's such like a nightmare. <laughs> and um, I low-key love disasters. I don't know what about it, but I feel like it's like, I feel like after a good shit show, you can't tell me anything and I'm like less scared. <laughs> and like, <laughs> Lagos is definitely that. There's like a reason all commercials are shot in South Africa, not Lagos. <laughs> and, and so, uh, but yeah, it was fun and I'm really grateful. Now that's how I got roped into the process. <laughs> that's beautiful. That's beautiful. And last but not least, the one, the only woman other than Beyonce to direct this film is the beautiful Jen Inkiru. It's so nice to meet you. Um, I have to tell you that I bawled after I saw Brown Skin Girl. Like, I had to stop it. I had to get a whole box of tissue, and I bawled for 10 minutes. I have never seen myself like that ever before. I've never seen, that's how I look at Black women. That's how mm. I look at women. I was like, wow, someone gets, y'all get that this is mm. how we look at each other. And to see that was so beautiful. So I just had to start there, but please, <laughs> So thank you for that. But I just have to, to you know, you, you guys were so beautiful in the way that you did that. But I have to ask you, how did you become a part of this? Um, and how did that feel mm. to be the only other woman director other than B mm. herself? <laughs> First of all, let me apologize for my tardiness. Apologies. Oh, no. It's been like a string of like calls today. I've been doing this for like five hours. So forgive me that I'm late. And then also, I just want to acknowledge everyone here because this was a creative effort, you know, collective effort. And Chrissy Holt held us down so much, you know, um, and we haven't all had an opportunity yet to come together. And I'm really yearning for that. I hope we can do that, you know, as a group soon. Because um, I just love to talk with everyone. And, you know, some of us know each other more than others. And I just want to kind of get to know everyone that much more, you know on a person-to-person -person level so to lead with gratitude first um and to answer your question Gia I feel like you know I know it's so over said at this point but women and black women are magic right like you literally point the camera and it oozes and so my job became what I would, what would say easy um, but the translation became, was very clear, you know, on this for me. Um, it was very much thinking about what is the spectrum of womanhood? What's the spectrum of black womanhood? How can this be intergenerational in that we see um, women from all ages? How can this also be something that resides in a heart space on a heart level, right? This is not, wasn't a piece for me that felt like it had to do gymnastics, you know? What I mean, I mean like visual gymnastics. It didn't, for me at least, it didn't require that. It required for us to see, you know, and be seen. So my focus was very much towards how do we, um, how do we present ourselves in a considered, nurturing, heart-driven way, you know? Um, and how do we allow the visual motifs used in the piece to drive that idea forward? That for me was my kind of uh, into this, you know? Um, so yeah, I hope that answers it, but yeah. Jane, she was just mm -hmm. able, she was able to take the theme of rite of passage for the film too and just really interpret that beautifully and simply, you know, um, in a way culturally that isn't always seen and represented. And I think that that also, you know, you know, should be applauded because just this idea of, you know, debutantes, you know, I, it, you know, for her to be able to take that and just that is a, you know, for a lot of young black women and men in the south like that is a that's a huge thing it's, it was a huge thing for me i'm from houston texas so you know mm -hmm. for her to be able to, to you know add that element to this creative to me was super smart and when she first proposed it it was very very interesting mm -hmm. that's yeah. so 
Awesome. And, and I really just want to jump in too, because I just worked on a small part of that video, but I think uh, even when Quasi was filling me in, I, I've known of Jen's work from Back to Techno and stuff like that, but watching some of that footage for the first time and just seeing how still and confident and um, just like, yeah, just, just confident. It's like kind of the, a, a part of the movie that like makes you lean in. And that's one part where there is uh, just so much female energy. I think it's kind of really nice that the way she approached it was just, I, I, yeah, you just feel like you're leaning into the screen yeah. to like and take you, it more. And you felt that when you received the treatment. You yeah. saw the treatment, mm -hmm. you know, so it's just like, you know, I think that should just, that should be applauded because, you know, she really came in and, you know, did what she was called to do. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, Thank you. You did that. You did that. Um, you. And I, literally, there's so many things because we had almost 90 minutes of, of content to consume and there's so many things that I want to talk about, but I definitely want to talk about the idea of Afrofuturism Afro mm. and the idea of also marrying the past, the present, our ancestors, and the idea of imagining a better future. And in this time when we are literally in the most revolutionary time that probably any of us have lived through, um, it is so important. It's even more important that we have films like this to look back to and say, yes. yeah, I'm a, I've been a king. Uh, I should like, I knew that, mm -hmm. but now that I see it and replay in my head, when I go to protest on the streets, it's a different meaning. It means like, you should absolutely respect me because you don't know who, what power I have. And if you don't know, I'm gonna show you today. Um, and so I know Blitz, you are super huge on that. I think you called it black, which is imaginary, imagination cinema, or I've read an uh, article. Mm. Um, a black imaginative cinema. I want to talk to you, especially about that. Um, what do you think is the impact that it will have on this revolutionary moment right now? This black is king will have on this revolutionary moment right now. What do you hope it is? Ooh, man. So look, I've got a ten-year-old son, right? Mm. And and you know, I I work with him. You know, everything I do, he's he's there with me consistently and to see to see him see himself you uh, know in, in a way that look he hustled me to get disney plus when it first launched and I, and I paid that annual fee right and sat there with him and couldn't find anything that you know really truly encapsulated what we talk about you know about africa where he's east where his his grandparents are from you know where what our lives have been up until this point so I remember like one of one of the most significant moments, at least for me in my contribution was speaking with Kwesi and, and B about how we elevate this piece to the celestial, right? How we elevate this to the cosmos, because obviously, you know, we were doing so much and it was spanning so much of the diaspora, it was spanning so much of, of, of the continent. Uh, but we also know that, you know, there, there is, even for some of us who are African, you know, there is a proximity issue, right? Whether it's, you know, diaspora proximity, whether it's, you know, continental proximity. It's just like, you know, you just, so much that we don't know, right? Uh, even for people who live and grow up on the continent, right? It's so little. And so, you know, it, it was about how do we elevate this thing celestially? Because even if you're not on the continent at this moment, we all live under the stars. We understand the stars, right? And so that was like a huge kind of moment of like expansion, at least in my mind, right? And I think it also freed us up a bit to then dig a little deeper into our cosmology, you know? And that's when the Dogon tribe kind of became central in our narrative. The Dogon tribe being a, a Malian tribe that, you know, for close to 5,000 years before invention of telescopes had already charted complex interplanetary movements, right? Uh, in ways that like, I didn't find out about this till I was in college, I was about to graduate college, right? So like my whole life, I was robbed of this basic, incredible genius, right? That I am adjacent to. So it was very important for, for me at least to say, all right, here's an opportunity to elevate this piece, anchor it 
in, 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 in tradition. Because again, when we talk about Afrofuturism as a concept, it's like, we're just starting from here. No, it's like, it's like this wild old cycle that we're, we're just part of the cycle. Not, none of this is, is and, and even like in some of the places we chose, right? Even like where the, the levitation moment happens uh, and, and, and it's in Ponte Tower we shot in, in South Africa. You know, that was such a moment of like looking at the concentric circles, right? Like through which this gentleman kind of elevates and, and goes in. For me, it was like, oh, whoa, this is what, this is what I haven't had. This is what my son hasn't had. Like this is an opportunity to talk about how the past and the, and the future all collide here. And what we do in this moment changes what the future is gonna be. Hence the responsibility, right? With, with some of these images. So watching, you know, it, I wasn't surprised at the response. Yes, it, it, it was overwhelming. I saw the world kind of all stop and vibrate at the same moment, but I, I wasn't surprised. One, because of just the brilliance that had already kind of touched this project and, and like the brilliant hands that already shaped it. You know, I, I, I called it like, you know, like Dream Team 1992, right? It was like, yes. somebody, somebody throws yes. it on the backboard, you know, somebody comes with the hammer. You know, it was just like, couldn't move. You couldn't lose because there was so much brilliance that had already, and so much heart. And that's kind of Jen said, you know, so much beauty. Everybody had given their beautiful selves, right? And so that I kind of came in was just figuring out how, how from a, from just not from now, but how do we make, how, how do we create this true circle of, of brilliance that was before us? Because it's been so much of it. Brilliance that, that we're living through now and the brilliance that we bequeath. To, to this to this next generation i mean where they stand is is incredible like we didn't have this to stand on you know in in, in this moment that's you know it, it existed in, in fragments right this kind of consolidates us in a way that has never happened and so i look at the next generation and i say man you guys from here on out like you got it you know and, yeah and i think even even for me i'm just gonna you know just give a a, a shout out to our director because, you know, in Lemonade, she says, you know, the past and present merge to meet us here. Yes. And that, and to me, this is a continuum of that, you know, and I think that we had already, she had already been imagining a lot of different spaces. You know what I'm saying? We had shot Don't Jealous Me, we had shot Find Your Way Back, we had shot so many different things. And like Blitz was saying, grounding it in tradition became a really, really important element of it. But it's, it, it also for me, it was kind of clearing the smoke of the past, mm. you know, that we as, you know, from a Western perspective, we, we tend to have when we think about our ancestors, we tend to have a clouded vision of who they were and where they come from. And we don't understand a lot of us don't understand the core. And I think that for me, going back to what she said, you know, in us, in The Lion King being about the circle of life, mm -hmm. in her already saying the past and the, and the present merged to meet us here, like how do we expand on that? And how do we turn that into something, you know, how, or let me correct myself, how do we kind of pass the time ah. and turn that and turn this project into something that could then further what that had the, the groundwork or platform that that had already laid. So, you know, for me personally, you know, I, I think that being able to do something like this for, you know, our generation and the generations after us and, and to be able to kind of lay a stake in the ground with this creative that speaks to who we are, that speaks to kind of how we're represented past and present and, in, in many ways, reface it, you know, was very, very interesting and something I'm, I'm, and I'm sure the rest of the team are really proud of. Yeah, and, and I just want to add to that. Um, I know, like, we're talking about this project a lot of ways in a very, like, um, in terms of the effect of um, it was having. I mean, I'm sure many of you got a million texts when it came out from loved ones. I mean, I've never gotten a response like that on anything I've ever worked on ever. <laughs> but um, I think what, what was really special about speaking about history and the past and uh, and um, and I, I think just the fact that this was funded, you know what I mean? Like so much, so many times I'm never in a position of privilege or I'm like the only person in the room 
who has the power to like write my history and um and it gets muddled along the way and and i feel like, like you know like parkwood i just feel like in general has been like a real patron of like black arts you know yeah, and um sure. that's so important we, we really don't have anyone bankrolling <laughs> our you know art is a rich kid sport and like you do need we, we need black people to invest in our cultural well-being i think we're just mm -hmm. so in such a survival mode so often that like yeah. we forget about it feels passive our culture sometimes and you know we're so oral with it and things like that but i really like the urgency of the resources thrown behind it that like a black woman is saying hey this isn't enough let's try and work on it some more because you know i and you know, i know quasi and blitz and and b kind of were like you know what let's just end it here like they still wanted to go even further and like i've just never been in a place where people are trying to give us that many resource resources just to express ourselves like sometimes we get that when it's like an emergency or something tragic has happened but just yeah. to have that support and resources to bring joy was just something that really moved me because um, mm -hmm. i never see that you know even when i watch like movies that talk about blackness or africanness a lot of the greats that you see on the cinema list are like Casablanca, District 9, like all these things that aren't really our voices. They're someone else archiving our history for us somewhat accurately, but not really doing a great job of representing us. And so I think that was just, yeah, just something I just felt was also just something really special from this project. And I hope other people take notice. And, and also Emmanuel was very, a very, very vital in helping us paint a lot of these worlds from a surrealist point of view as well. And, you know, I think that even getting your, your perspective, Emmanuel, on this, mm -hmm. because in talking about past and present and also talking about the celestial and all of that, you kind of helped us mm -hmm. really paint these pictures. So like, what, what, what do you, what do you think? Yeah. Um, um well, I, what's you know what's what was so great about this project was that it touched so many um well first of all time is fluid mm. so past present future that's like it, it felt like we we're in, we were we were in that moment there was a momentum and everybody was trying to figure out how to deal with that moment but um but what was so great about this 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 project was that it touched so many, I mean, it touched so many big teams, uh, the same teams that were in The Lion King, you know, about accepting uh, one's role uh, and responsibility in life, mm. and, 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 and which also includes accepting consequences from past mistakes. And um, it, 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 the, the, re, the, the meaning of this project to me uh, made it even more um how do you say it like it 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 gave it a, a a new like the fact that the fact that we wanted to make this piece and 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 that there was an audience for it waiting for this piece to happen kind of made it all work but just putting it putting in the work wasn't enough we actually had to um find ways to retell a story retell the story from a from a black perspective black in the broader sense so i feel like where i sort of tried to come in was um was to mediate the visuals um um, maybe maybe a bit more theoretically and um, I guess that's where crazy crazy and I kind of find found a nice way to um, to incorporate visual effects um, in in ways that have never been done before mm. you know like um, you know the visual effects with 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 black people I mean we all know black we all know black panther like that's that's like the most you could almost say the most recent um project that like the world saw right. where that incorporated 
you know, black excellence. And to be privileged to work on a project that had the same sort of, that struck the same core visually and boundaryless and, be, and to be able to be part of, 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 of telling that story without any, um, like basically with, with the right intention yeah. felt like a, a mission. But um, it, the, like I said, the intention was there and, it, and, and, and the team around it was so strong that it couldn't, it, like there was no way for it not to work. It was just a matter of time. Mm, literally just a matter of time. Yeah. I love that you draw the, draw the comparison or, or to Black Panther because mm-hmm. I think it's also a testament to the power of Parkwood Entertainment led mm-hmm. by Beyonce, a Black woman who is funding, pretty much funding this project yes. Yes. that has the same exact impact of a Black Panther, which is mm-hmm. backed by Marvel Entertainment, which has like a... Yes billion dollar budget and hundreds of actors and hundreds mm-hmm. of people. The fact that she was able to do this and the fact that you all are essentially the new Avengers <laughs> of black storytelling <laughs> is incredible. And we really, I just have to let you all know, we really don't take it lightly. Um, especially everyone listening today. Like when you get a chance, please go look up all of the people on this call because they're, their credits. We don't even have time. Like it would be an hour just to talk about everyone, what everyone has done here separately. Um, And so I do want to say that before I continue the conversation, because I think that's so important. Marvel has made 40 billion films and this is, you know, Beyonce has made several great films, but this is such an important moment. Um, So I would love, I just wanted to say that. Um, And before we go, we have to talk about the symbolism in this film, which again, could also be another 40 hour chat. Um, But everyone here touched a particular part and really had particular takeaways. And there was my favorite part is that it flipped so many narratives on its head, whether it was uh, the whole Mood Forever video with Beyonce standing there and letting a white servant brush her teeth or whether it was, uh, you know, even the fact that Simba is no longer a lion. He's a young black boy. There were so many um, themes flipped on its head. I want to talk to each of you about some or one that really stuck with you or that you hope people notice. And even if there are some nuggets that people haven't noticed within the symbolism within the film, um, I would love to to go into that a bit before we head out. What I love so much about what Black is King does is it's an, it's, it's for me, it's a soulful conversation. And mm-hmm. I think that, you know, when you connect, it's visceral and You know, there is a, you know, one of the symbolisms that I love, you know, is this, is, is the rebirth scene right before um, water with the women holding, you know, Mm -hmm. with the calabash, which is also a symbol of rebirth. And that's something that, um, you know, a lot of people don't pick up and just to really create this monument of the woman and, and the working, the working mother and just this, this this the the core of this earth which is like the many women that work and that you know give their lives to make sure that this earth is is continuously you know rotating you know to me that was you know really really powerful and for for Beyonce to hold the calabash in her head is like the is is also representing like you know women and mothers holding our lives on their shoulders mm-hmm. you know so you know to me that was really that's really really powerful and that's something that I personally love. I love that. Jen and Josh, we haven't heard from you guys in a while. <laughs> what, what are some nuggets um, of symbolism that you really, really love? Um, okay, I'll take it, Jen, then. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, should I? I think overall, like similar to what I talked about earlier, is that the, the, the commonality between Black Panther Lion King and coming to America, all being around royalty, all being around Africa is not just by, you know what I mean? Like it's really like, if we think about like our experiences, whether you grew up here in the West or on the continent itself or spent time, you were always fishing for, you know, a a solid identity that felt like something because at home, you knew what it felt like. You come home, you speak another language, you eat different food, you like follow the tradition, right? But as soon as you went outside, there's the duality and the nuance of blackness. And I felt like that's really important to speak to because 
what black what black is king is is kind of this beautiful mosaic you know what i mean of people bringing their different pieces to the to the table um and i don't think there's been a story like that that's ever been the case in this age where something happens and there's so many different conversations um, from different parts of the world because everybody's so connected to the continent right and i think that's so important so whether you're in Bahia or Compton or Accra, or Lagos or wherever, like you felt a piece in this story. And I felt like that's really important because most times we don't get to say our part or have that be within the narrative. Um, so I think the overall theme of royalty and the connectivity of lineage and ancestry is super important. Um, and all the added feedback that people kind of had with it, whether it's on black Twitter, like everything is healthy perspective because people get to say how they feel and you know just remembering like maybe if it's 20 years 20 years ago or even less like i remember my parents calling my aunts and uncles in ghana phone card to tell them what's happening and like now it's just happening right now there's no phone card there's no like you literally, <laughs> you're literally being able to speak about our greater black family in in one moment we've never had that right so how do we love on each other but also appreciate different perspectives and i think that's what really truly stuck out to me within Black is King and the themes. Mm, beautiful. I think for me, like what my largest takeaway was um, this clear conversation around groundedness and this clear conversation around um, how do I say this? This clear conversation around this clarity of self and this relationship to self and this relationship to culture, your lineage, your history, it all gives, that's what builds you up and gives you the confidence, you know, to be, to, to shape shift through this world. Because this world, this world is an aggressive world, right? Filled with, filled with many different things that will try to pull you down, that will try to confuse you, that will try to turn you on your head but it very much was a reminder that if you are ever in a state of confusion, return to source. And that source that you return to is one that is, is, is a source that's a, it's a well, right? It's, it's a, I say the term well because it's evergreen, it's everlasting, it's ever giving, you know? And so if anyone ever wants to dissuade you on that path or, you know, kind of make you feel that you are less than, you have a reference point to point back to within yourself and to others that your, your, your place in this world is valid. And then also the conversation for me that was so magical in this is everything Blitz was saying around the celestial, you know, because I think a lot of the confusion um, and the scatteredness of what is the world right now is very, for me at least, is very much related to a lack of conversation with the spiritual, right? And so this is very much a piece that helps you realize that you can go between realms, right, of being, right, um, at any given time in order for you to literally help you find your way back, for mm -hmm. real. Like, you know, it's, it's not, for me, for me at least, like, it's not a language by accident. It's very purposeful. It's very clear, you know? And um, being able to give children, because I've given up on adults, right? Personally, <laughs> I don't have a lot of faith in adults. So a lot of my focus right now are children, you know? And because they are our most brilliant, they are our most pure, they are our most intelligent, they are our most connected, you know? So the fact that this level of story, messaging, whatever language you want to use to describe it, is directed to kids, you can only imagine, like, if we even as people, individuals, think about these things that played such a key role in our formative years, right? And how as adults we've carried that through and it's become central to how we even understand our existence. The fact that, for me, that's like the thing that brought me to tears is that kids, especially black children, can see this at this stage, right? And this can carry them through. And they have it as a document, which means they could always refer back to it if they ever need it. And then beyond black children too, children of all uh, backgrounds and races are able to see this. And maybe their relationship to their friends 
or mm. their future relationships to their black friends will become different or changed because of this. So it really is art as activism, really, you know, like this is like powerful stuff and There's the divine the, the <laughs> <laughs> and the timing, you know, the timing is so divine. Like yes. I I on a personal level, if I if I can say this, I'm so glad it didn't come out before this time. Like I'm so glad that it came out now. There's a particular way it's landing now that it just wouldn't have landed if it didn't come out at this time, you know? Um, so I'm just grateful to sit amongst these brothers and okay. sit amongst these group of uh, artists and, you know, just make something, make a document, you know, that can withstand because I'm constantly talking about that even in my own work is that I'm less concerned if today people understand it. I'm more concerned if 20 years from now, people can go back and reference it and take from it. And what's beautiful about this piece is that whether it's now, whether it's in the future, you watch it one time, but you, you probably won't land the level of motifs, the level of symbolism, the level of story that has been like infused into this thing. Like yeah. it literally calls for you to return to it, you know, um, and it's a nurturing space. It's a beautiful container. That's how I want to describe it. It's a beautiful container for blackness. So, yeah, I feel, I feel humbled and um, honored to be a part of this moment, truly. That was just beautiful. I can't oh, deal wow. with you. That's so good. Um, mm -hmm. any, before we wrap, anybody else want to add there? That's yeah, I just want to add, man. Thank you, Jan. It's, it's so lovely to... I know we haven't got had. had I know, man. <laughs> I know, these calls are like a tease every time. I <laughs> know. I know. So, I'm so grateful and, and so honored. I did want to mention, you know, that that moment in Jare though, that mm. you know, with the with the hearse, with the crazy pimped out hearse. Um, <laughs> That, that was, I, I remember like storyboarding it and then running it by the team and everybody going, how the hell are we going to do that? You know, mm -hmm. like we had like a week in South Africa to prep, you know, we had to find a hearse, you know, we had to, you know, we had to do all this stuff to it, but it, it was, it was a necessary moment of effervescence that the pro that it needed. Like we had been, we had been building this thing and we needed a release, right? A release that would, help us come back, you know, and, and just the fact that it was anchored by, you know, this like, you know, malignant ending, right? Where, you know, you get to see Scar who's kind of evolved into this thing, you know, it was so much representation, you know, this, this hearse that is also a party wagon, you know, right. which, which is, which is how, you know, it was, it was, you know, my personal kind of way in which I've seen the way we move on this, you know, on, on this planet as, as uh, specifically black people, you know, this, this container that we're constantly trying to, you know, uh, 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 use as a cover for the things that we've truly lacked. So, you know, this gentleman was really, he was lacking that love, that connection, that home, those things that mattered. And he had, he had wrapped himself in these vestiges of, 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 of opulence, right. Which truly like the minute you, like you didn't have to, like my son sees that and goes, oh, that can't be good. You know, like mm -hmm. that purse and that man leaning out of it and completely like on the edge and, and shout out the cast too, who were just brilliant at really being able to carry that feeling, you know? And every time, I mean, you know, I, I, like a, a tear kind of just came in my eye, like just watching it the first time <clears throat> when it all kind of came together because that was such a, a moment of where so many of us are, yeah. you know? Of trying to find like we all hit that place like I remember myself you know like in college completely because I just didn't have those affirming elements things that things that tell me I'm enough things that things that wrap around me positively right like you start to lean on all these other things right and it was it was beautiful to kind of see that as as symbolism right and and, and be so clearly understood in the narrative was, was just magical. And, and again, just to kind of add just very little, just kind of what Jen was saying, things that we've seen kind of end up shaping us, right? Yeah. Um, I remember watching Shaka Zulu as a kid. It, it came on, on Ghanaian national television years ago. 
And one of the things, like I loved like the epicness. I'd never seen African, I mean, I still remember the soundtrack today. Just like the, 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 the boisterous, you know, presence of that, of that soundtrack. One thing that bothered me and it had never left me as a kid was every time they went to where they showed Shaka Zulu's spear getting made, which was like supposed to be this, like this ma like magical kind of like, you know, you know, uh, spiritual space. It was it was the most scariest, most most just despicable representation, right? And I I never got it. I was like, but everything else is beautiful. Like, why couldn't you make his the forging of his spear, the spiritual realm, beautiful as well, right? And 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 that like it bothered me as a ten year old when I saw it. It con continued to plague me. And like, my work has really just been consistently asking myself always. How and 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 how beautiful can we make our spiritual realm? Because because again, back to back to connecting, you know, this her scene, right? It's like all of this is the reason we lose who we are is just because we don't have a beautiful reference of the spiritual realm, right? So so many of us lean on all these other things that have been, you know, like again, like dude, say whatever you want, but when you see that crucifixion in the 16th chapel, that's some beautiful ass shit. <laughs> Right? It, it beckons you. It makes you want. I mean, we're witnessing capital punishment. Right. But it, but it's beautiful. Right. And, and that's something that I've like I never got, you know, like growing up, like just, the, you know, and the spiritual realm in general, not just for Africans on the continent, because it's damn near taboo to talk about it on the continent. But 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 around the diaspora, thankfully, a few like I go to Bahia and I see Canton Blair. I go to Cuba. I see Santeria. Like a few people are trying to hold on. But I just, growing up, I just didn't have that. So like my commitment to any work that I've ever been a part of, including Black is King, is to make sure that that layer existed and it existed beautifully. So no kid is ever gonna look at this and go, yo, I, like I wanna turn away when, 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 when our Rafiki is, 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 is imbuing our, our Simba with, with his power. Like that's one of the, and God bless her soul, uh, uh, Mama Mary who passed away, didn't get to see this, but I know that she's smiling on us because that truly was her last on-screen performance. And it's just so powerful because of what it represented. And, and really that's just really all I wanted to say was like imbuing this project with a level of, 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 of an ethereal magic and beauty and spirituality that these kids that are coming up, like they don't even understand how lucky they are. Cause, cause I watch Shaka Zulu and I'm still scarred. You know? <laughs> That's funny you say that. I'm actually reading a book, uh, three books about Shaka Zulu because mm. a lot of, um, I was like thinking of like adapting it some way, mm -hmm. but a lot of the stories are like white people being like, he's so powerful and scary and he eats babies. And, <laughs> and like the Zulus have like another version. So like, this, the book I like the most is kind of like untangling that and being like, who was this real person? Because like what we know of him is just what white people archived of him and yeah, um, not definitely. what we archived of him. And, um, but, but yeah, I, I, think, I think that was like, that was really well put about the symbolism and the importance of us writing our own stories. And, um, I, I, and one last thing I want to touch about the symbolism in this is that me and Quasi had conversations and that's, it's rare I've, I've worked on stuff where I'm, I'm still talking about it with the people I made it with. Cause I'm right. still like, trying to like, be like, what is this in a way? <laughs> and um, yeah, we were just talking about a lot of the questions come up like, you know, what does this mean? And like, what does this mean as a black artist or in the time where it's like an African and the D is for, and I think it's, it's, I think my favorite thing about this is like even me starting to investigate what my identity means in terms of like my permission to tell this story and having those conversations. And I think um, one thing we touched on was um, when people are like, oh, what does this mean with, you know, I feel like as black artists, like we get asked about our art and identity a lot. And um, it's like a bittersweet question because it's like, I'm just making the art. I'm not, of course I'm thinking about being black, but that's not my entire existence. My existence is just my existence. And, um, but my blackness is important, but I think there's this um, thing that's lost in translation that where, when I make black art, 
black for me represents om, like it represents the earth, it represents the source, it represents everything, it represents the beginning. So anytime I make something that's black, it means everything. And like, it's not just, it doesn't mean this corner. And it's, it's really frustrating when it means this corner and not everything. I think yeah. that is such like a clash in storytelling. And I feel like a lot of the themes in this movie that really stuck with me, I feel like this is one of the few things I've worked on where I feel like it's helping people understand that black means the word om. And like, yeah. it doesn't mean this corner of the world. Like I really love, I was talking crazy about how much I love the poster because it's, it's the entire universe, it's the world. It's not just like this corner. It's like, when I speak about blackness, I'm speaking about humanity, the source of like civilization. And I like that you have this black child in space speaking yeah. to the universe. We're not even just contextualizing him to just the continent of Africa or just the land. It's like yeah. the ocean, it's the sky, it's everything. And I think, um, I think I want that to be people's takeaway from this piece. It's like to recontextualize black as meaning everything and not just the corner. And that's okay. It doesn't like mean you're less than <laughs> or anything. It's just like the history of the world in a way. And um, yeah, I guess, I guess that's it. Yeah. And I guess for me, I have to also then, you know, what I think Ibra kind of in in with the comments on the poster, just in many ways sums up what the intention of this project is. And I think that, you know, again, I have to, you know, I have to really applaud, you know, the director who's not here to, you know, really talk this through because, <laughs> you know, she was all, she was the one that was just like, I want to see this boy levitate from the earth. Huh. You know? okay. And you know, and that is, that's the core of it. And I think that that was so in placing us in different spaces where we can feel represented from the spiritual to, you know, to this earth that we live in. It's always been something that's super, super important to her, myself, and everybody that's on this call, which is why they're on this call. And I think that, you know, being able to have like minds come together and really share this discourse this visual discourse that has then created like this amalgamation of representation and of us where we're glorified and celebrated to me is a powerful thing. And, you know, that is what Black is King is to me. I think that that is what it represents and that's what it truly stands for. So I, you know, for me personally, and I've told, I've told majority of everyone here, I have to applaud everybody for being, you know, just so passionate and, you know, I have to applaud her. But then also there's a, there's a team at Parkwood too. Like, you know, I'm the lead, but then there's also other parts of our team that worked, other creative directors within the company that worked on this and that, you know, every, this was like, like Beyonce said in her letter, like you can tell, you could tell how much love she had in this project because that's the first time she she's written the caption right. that long. Yeah. <laughs> you know? You know, so, you know, it's just <laughs> going from, you know, Lemonade, where she says, well, throughout the span of her career, but going in Lemonade, where she says the past and present merged to meet us here, and then actually, you know, depicting that meeting, you know, in Black is King, to me, is a powerful thing. So, um, I'm, you know, me personally, I'm super proud of that. I'm, yeah. I'm really, really proud to be a part of that, to be yes. a vessel. In that. That's what I was going to say, and, I, and one of my favorite lines in this film is uh when it says you're about to meet yourself you're turning yes. back to yourself right. um it, it just really hones in on that point that our power is already there we oh, just lose yeah. it by all the distractions yeah. the exactly. social media comparisons like it was that was a, the mirror we needed and the hug we desperately desperately right. and it's so interesting that you said that because you say in that same section she says you're about you're coming into yourself and then she says the, co the, the coast belongs to our ancestors. So there again, that's the past and the present yeah. coming to meet us here, you know? And, you know, that is, it's, it's, I, I love that you brought that out because that is the hug that, that is, that's why that's my, that's the rebirth section with the Kalabash. Mm -hmm. Like that's why that's one of my favorite sections because that is our, 
that's the realization of who we are and where we stand. And when we look at our ancestors and say, okay, this is who we are and we're ready to take the baton. Like that is what that represents. So like yeah, these, black is king. That line. Uh-oh, go ahead. No, I was gonna say. I know you say like this was for children and I'm still mad at Disney Plus for putting TV 14 on it. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> <laughs> Were you yeah. supposed to say something, Emmanuel? No, I was just um, replying back on Quasi. The this line, um, I think it's in Nile, where um, Beyonce says, "These streams may take you out to the ocean." Mm. I feel like that that line is so important because you know the ocean is is massive, and you can drown and and yes. you pretty much can die. Yep, but this film has given us uh, the strength to at least swim, you know? As you see her uh, float, like, arms outstretched. Yeah, arms sweat, like, pretty much, like, owning it, you know? Yeah. And, 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 and also embracing it. And what, what I love about, speci specifically that scene in water, is the top shot on, uh, on um, Miss B floating. And it, it kind of resembles, uh, if you would put it in a more like iconographic way, like it, it is it is a it is a messiah, you know. It is a, but it's also a um, it's also her levitating, you know. So there's a lot of like um, there, there there's a lot of uh, symbolism that 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 this film touches and just just by just being just knowing that you have this responsibility as an artist is so is so important because you know it's gonna touch people in a way and you need to be very um, um you, you you need to guard yourself with the right you know uh, with with the right info, info and the right uh, message yeah. and I feel like just also giving a great credit to uh, Miss B for even allowing us to and trusting yeah. us to to participate in 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 telling this story because you know we all have our own language of, of of you know and and at the same time this this is a this is a a, a piece that that is a universal message and touches a lot of you know, like it touches us in so many different ways. And um, yeah, it's, I just want to get it straight that, that, that part was really, that was really, that was what touched me, like seeing her float and, and also giving like the embracing, that's to me, that moment is her embracing the world, but also the world embracing this piece. Beautiful. Yeah, I love that you said that because she's also told us that we can, you know, this project also tells us along with her vision for it and, you know, our collective vision for it has kind of reaffirmed that we have the power to live in the beyond. Mm. You know, we have the we, we have the power to live in this space and, um, you know, and, and be and feel represented, you know, mm. and I think that that is that to me, too, in, in, in you know, in conjunction with everything that everyone else has said is it adds to this whole black is king and makes it so powerful yeah yes, yes well guys we have to wrap i can't believe this is the end i could talk to you all for 12 more hours seriously about this um but i just want to say thank you so much this was really purpose work this was literally the uh result of bigger what beyonce talks about in the first song this is all bigger than so mm. than all of you all um and what you did is so important so i'm honored to be able to have had this moment with you all i hope you all know how much we love you, you know, this culture, especially here at Tell Black Stories. You are what we are of Black people telling and creating our stories from our point of view. So thank you so much to Jen and Kiru, Joshua Kissy, Emmanuel Ajay, Blitz Bazawale, Ibra Ake, Koisi for Jure. Thank you so much <laughs> for coming on today and make sure you all subscribe to uh, Tell Black Stories. Make sure you listen to this episode and more on Apple Podcasts and wherever you stream. I'm Benjia Peppers, and we'll see you later. Bye.